I am deeply concerned that Iceland is not prepared for what the next few decades of volcanic eruptions could potentially bring in a region where the majority of the nation's population lives. Although much of what I am about to say is speculation instead of pure fact, so take it with a grain of salt, I am saying the following as a volcanologist and geologist who is looking at the area's prior eruptive history. Typically, when a person thinks of Iceland's most dangerous volcano, the name Katla comes to mind. And, while Katla is the nation's most dangerous volcano in the long term, it is not in the short term. While Katla may not produce a large eruption, let alone an eruption for another few decades, there is another volcano which may very well produce a highly explosive eruption in the short term, specifically the Reconis volcano on the Reconis Peninsula. Although the Reconis Peninsula produces far less frequent eruptions than certain other Icelandic volcanic regions, it undergoes infrequent decade-long periods where highly frequent eruptions occur at multiple volcanoes only to be followed by hundreds to thousands of years of little to no activity. We happen to be in one of those uncommon active periods, and since 2020, volcanic unrest has resulted in four volcanic eruptions and these other events. Because the now weak old eruption of the Reconis volcano was so small in size, I fear that the public at large might be getting a false impression of what this volcano is capable of. The last time the Reconis volcano entered an active phase was from 1210 to 1240, and in that period seven eruptions occurred, five of which had explosive components to them which emitted ash. This explosive activity largely only occurred when a submarine vent was involved, as lava and seawater create a highly explosive interaction. Looking further back, it appears that the majority of Reconis's eruptions in the last 10,000 years involved submarine vents and thus some form of an explosive component to them. While no fresh underground magma has been detected at the same location that during the 13th century submarine explosive eruptions, fresh magma has already been detected underneath shallow ocean waters. What I am referring to is that 3600 meters of the 15 kilometer long magma dike which formed on November 10th, 2023 occurred offshore of the town of Grindavik. This very dike now represents a long-term weak point in the crust which magma will likely once again intrude into in the future and could eventually create an explosive eruption. While we do not have any records of explosive eruptions occurring in the past south or southwest of what is now Grindavik, I am assuming that similar behavior could occur as witnessed during the 13th century eruptions. While I do not personally predict the next eruption of Reconis expected to happen in the first quarter of 2024 to occur from a submarine vent, there is still a slight possibility that an explosive submarine eruption could take place. And, if not then, maybe sometime in the next few decades. If an explosive submarine eruption were to hypothetically occur, it could produce ash that could generate the following three hazards. Hazard 1, if sufficient ash was emitted, it could seep into the region's groundwater, thus contaminating it with potentially toxic concentrations of fluorine and certain heavy elements. Since groundwater provides the vast majority of Iceland's water supply and the majority of the population lives in range where ash could fall from the Reconis volcano, you can see the potential problem. Hazard 2 involves air traffic, as any explosive eruption would disrupt regional air traffic at the airport which receives 90% of Iceland's passenger volume. Hazard 3 is ashfall itself, which, when affected by the frequent precipitation the area receives, often causes roofs to collapse at depths of 10 or more centimeters. While these hazards represent somewhat unlikely worst-case scenarios, I propose the following policy changes which are appearing on screen to reduce the future risk to infrastructure and people. My personal policy is to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst possible outcome when talking about how to plan ahead involving future volcanic eruptions. As a final note, I would like to thank my new patron, Anna Tain, for supporting this channel.